in this video, we're going to talk about variables and types. So if you take a look at your screen right now, you'll see that I pulled up the lecture notes based on variables and types. So the things that we want to be able to do here are understand the basic data types, such as an integer, a float, and a string. There's other ones that we're going to look at, which are container types, such as a list, a set, and a dictionary. But those are the basic, basic primitive data types that we're going to take a look at. We're going to be able to check the type of variable, because one of the things is I can't teach you everything in these videos or in this class. So it's going to be very helpful for you to be able to look at a piece of code that you're working on and say, what variable type is this? So we'll actually take a look at a way where we can actually look at the data types of a variable inside of a program. Be able to create a list, insert elements into a list, and remove elements from the list. So there's several different ways we're going to be able to do that. And a list is just a container. It allows us to take one variable and put things inside of it, like one, two, three, four sequences of numbers, other lists. So they're very flexible in that we can essentially put anything that we want inside of those. We'll take a look at a dictionary where as a list goes based on what's called an index, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, we can also do what's called a dictionary where we have a map, where we can identify a key and a value pair. So the key is how we actually reach the value. So the dictionary is just a container, but we refer to each object with a key. So that key could be a string, could be a number. So we can make it look like a list by just using a number 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, that, that sort of stuff. So we're going to look at those, how we insert values, how we remove elements, that sort of stuff. And then how we distinguish between an integer and a floating point. Because a lot of times when we look at integers and floating point, things don't seem to happen like they would, as you would think, mathematically. So when we take a look at this, we'll take a look at these variables. So what I'd recommend you do is open up your Anaconda or whatever you have, your Spider 3, like I've got over here, and follow along with what I'm discussing here. So one of the things that we're going to take a look at is what a variable actually is, how do we declare it, that sort of stuff. So I just do this out of habit, but I'm going to do the def main, and then the if name equals main. So that's a double equal sign. And so the reason I do this is because whenever we grade your work, we're going to try to pull it apart so that we can see what has the flaws in it and what doesn't. So one of the things we're going to do is if you don't have this main in here, what's going to happen is every time we import your code, it's going to run the entire thing. What we wanna be able to do is splice off your code into smaller sections. So we can give you as most credit as we possibly can. So let's take a look at this. So def stands for define main. This is what's known as a function that we'll learn later. And then the if name equals equals main. So the double equal sign, this is what's known as a condition. So Python automatically creates a variable called underscore underscore name, and it will set it equal to underscore underscore main underscore underscore, which is kind of weird, if that is the only program running. Now we can import, as you'll see with modules like the math module and things like that, we can import other types of code into our code. And that's essentially what we're going to do with your program. We're going to create a testing body, and we're going to import your code into that, and then run little pieces of it to see if it works and if you don't have this portion as soon as we import your code it runs the entire thing and we cannot test each individual element so that's why i'm trying to get you in the habit of using this and this is going to be widely seen you'll, you'll see this on all the examples you'll see this if you search the internet for python scripts that sort of stuff you'll see this type of construct it might look a little bit different but all in all it's accomplishing the same goal so back to the original point that we're talking about here variables and types so a type is basically a variable is just anything that we set so like a equals zero in python we just set a variable equal to something and it creates the variable in this case called a so what i'm going to do is i'm going to print a and let's see what we get notice we get the value zero so it's doing exactly what we expected to do. We set A equals zero, we print A, and it gives us zero. That's essentially it. So a variable is just a name that we're assigning a memory location. So in a computer, we have the CPU, the central processing unit, as well as RAM, random access memory. And all this sort of stuff is being stored in memory inside the computer. However, memory is just zeros and ones. And that would make our lives a lot harder to have to identify, okay, where in RAM did this get stored? In fact, Python gets to decide where it wants to put those in conjunction with the operating systems such as Windows, Mac, or Linux, or something like that. So it's helpful to give a name to it so that A is always equal to zero or always refers to this variable. Now, what we generally recommend is that you give good names to these variable types or these variable names because A doesn't really, it's non-descriptive. It doesn't tell us what it is. 
Now, in this case, we're not writing a real program to do anything. So I'm just using A as an example. So remember what we're going to do to create a variable. That's the one thing. To create a variable, we set the left-hand side equal to the right-hand side. So left-hand side is going to be the variable name equals to the right-hand side, which is going to be the value that we want to assign that. Now, that value can be a what's known as an expression, something like uh, 1 plus 2 times 3 or something like that. So what that's going to do is now Python, before it can actually assign a number into the variable A, it has to... Uh, calculate whatever's on the right hand side of the equal sign so in this case it will do three times two so order of operations are normal in mathematics as well as in python so it'll do three times two give us six plus one which gives us seven so then after it actually solves that expression it can assign that into the variable called a and just remember a variable a is just a memory location inside the computer in which it's going to store this value so we run it and we get the value seven now, by the way, if you're following along, you can actually go up to run and run, but I'm hitting F5, as you can see right here. If you're on a Mac, it might be a different key. So that's what's actually uh, I'm, I'm running these with. So if you're wondering how I'm doing it quickly, that sort of stuff, I'm just hitting F5 to run it over here on the right-hand side. So you can see we get the value seven as normal. However, let's take a look at what data type these are. So we're going to have what are known as operators. We have the divide operator, multiplication, things like that. So whenever we have variables, once again, all we're doing is assigning a memory location of value. However, that doesn't really give us as much power as we want. So now what we want to be able to do is use these variables in mathematical operations. So for example, I can say B equals A times three or something like that. So what we'll do is Python on line three here, we'll take the value of A, which we know is seven, but it can, it's variable. So it could be user input or something like that and multiply that by three. So now notice we're still printing A. So what do we expect to be printed to the screen? Hopefully you said seven, because we're not printing B yet. A is one memory location, B is another memory location. We've assigned A three times two plus one, which is seven. We've assigned B the value of seven, which is in A, multiplied by three. So in that case, let's do A comma B. Now in print, we can separate our variables out with comma and it will automatically add spaces into them. So when I do this, we get seven space 21. So seven is the value of A, 21 is the value of B, just like what we expected it to be. So variables, once again, are just a way to name all these types that we're talking about. Integers, floats, strings, that sort of stuff. So as you probably see, let's take a look at the data types that we can actually put inside of here. So the data types that we have here are what are known as integers. And one way we can actually check that, and this was one of our learning objectives, was to type type, T-Y-P-E. And then we put the variable name inside of there, like B, and it says that it's a class int. Int is short for integer. Now, in computers, we actually have two different sections inside the central processing unit, one called the arithmetic and logic unit and one called the floating point unit. Now, integers are performed in that arithmetic and logic unit. However, there's one big drawback in there. It's very powerful. It's very fast. However, it cannot store decimals, anything to the right of a decimal. So it can't store real numbers. It can only store integer numbers. So in this case, what we're going to do is we see that we have the value seven. So let's uh, value 21 in B, seven in A. So let's do this. Let's say A is equal to A divided by two. And then what we're going to do is print out A and print out the type of A. So let's take a look at what happens here. So notice what happened in Python automatically without me actually changing anything. So A was an integer. So let's print it up here and see what the type of A is. So notice that A equals one plus two times three is an integer. Why? Because one's an integer, two is an integer, and three is an integer. How can we tell? Well, there's no decimal. It's a number without a decimal. That's an integer. Then what we do on line three is we print, hey, what data type did Python give it? So all we do in Python is we say, here's the name, here's the value we want to set the name. Python will automatically determine the data type that it needs to go in. And the reason we have data types is remember in the CPU, we have two different things or two different sections of the CPU to run code differently. So integers are performed here, floating point real numbers are performed over here. So as you can see on line four, I say A equals A divided by two. So that's the old version of A, which was an integer. And the front slash is the divide, so A over two. So that's how we divide numbers inside of Python. Now notice what happens on line five, it goes from an integer to a float. 
Why? Because A divided by two, the single forward slash will perform real division. So in this case, A divided by two, which is seven divided by two will give us three and a half. Now, what would happen if we perform this in the integer side? Well, three and a half cannot be stored in the integer side and we'd actually get three. There's a way to do that in Python and that's the two forward slash. The two forward slash is known as integer division or also known as forward division. So notice what happens. Now, before we took an int and we created a float, 3.5 became a float 3.5. The class int is still line three right here. So that's the one plus two times three. And then this three right here is seven for division by two. So seven by two is three and a half. However, remember in the section of the CPU that this Python is executing this in, it can't store decimals. So what it does is it performs the division, drops all the decimals, it's known as truncation. Why? Because it didn't round. Three and a half should go to four, but it didn't. It truncates. It doesn't even consider anything to the right-hand side. So 3.9999999 will still give you three because it truncates that value. 3.1 would give you three, 2.9 would give you two, that sort of stuff. So it's very important to understand what is actually being performed inside the computer. So the double forward slash will give us an integer. However, there's one caveat. So once again, I said one, two, and three right here are integers. However, if I put a little decimal point in front of it or behind it and do 2.0, now Python is going to in, uh, interpret that as a float. So whenever we do integer, the floor division operator with any float parameter, so if A is a float or 2.0 is a float, it will do floor division with a float. So if they're both integers, it will do integer division, no type changes, that sort of stuff. Notice we had an int and we got an int back. However, in this case, I'm using the double forward slash, which is floor division, but now it converts it over into a float. However, look at the number, it's 3.0. So those are the caveats that we have to understand. The double forward slash, if we have two integers, will give me an integer back with a truncated decimal place. So this 3.5 becomes integer three. However, if there's a float, if A in this case is a float or 2.0 is a float, which it is, it's going to give us a float. Now notice what it did, it floored the division. So we either truncate if they're both integers or for the floats, we do floored division. So that's what the two forward slashes are doing for us. So let's take a look. So the star, as you probably already determined is multiplication. So multiplication, if I have two integers, will always give me an integer. If I have a floating integer, now Python has a decision to make. So let's say b equals a times 4.5, okay? So in this case, we have seven times 4.5. So what has to happen? Now remember, 4.5 is a float, a is an integer. So let's do this, print type a, and we'll do type 4.5, okay? Whenever we run this code, we verify that yes, we get an integer for A and 4.5, which is a float. So now what's going to happen whenever I do B? So what has to happen is Python has a decision to make. Okay, do I store this as an integer or do I store this as a float? Well, because we don't wanna lose data unless we tell Python to lose data, it's going to store the one that stores more information, which is a float in this case. So let's print type B and notice we get a float. So if we have an integer and a float, we have to promote the integer up to a float just temporarily. So A still is an integer, even though in line three, it is used temporarily promoted up to a float to do the multiplication, okay? Oops, I said print, not type, there we go. All right, so notice A is still an integer. However, on line three, for it to multiply, remember there's two sections in the CPU, they can't coexist. We have to translate one into one. So what happens is because we have a 4.5 there, that's a float. So what the CPU is going to do is it's going to take A, move it from the integer section of the computer and put it into the floating point. So that becomes 7.0. So what it's going to do is multiply 7.0 by 4.5, store that result into B. Now A for the time being was just loaded in the FPO. That's the floating point unit. That's just temporary. So notice when in line five, I print out the type of A, it's still an integer. It did not change A. So generally what you can think of is everything on the right-hand side of the equal sign is getting a value. Everything on the left-hand side of the equal sign is getting a value. That's being set a value, okay? So as we can see here, now let's print out the value of B. 
Okay, 31.5, which is indeed seven times 4.5. So that's 28, take half of seven, gives us 31, so that's three. In this case, we take a look at all these different ways we have variables. Now, variables can interact with each other just like what we saw in line three, B equals A times 4.5. So these are your primitive data types, your integers, your floats, that sort of stuff. They're also known as Booleans, A equals true, B equals false, that sort of stuff. If I print out the type of A and the type of B, we have what's known as bool. Bool is short for Boolean. Boolean is something that can take either on, off, true, false, yes or no. So in this case, notice that it's capital true, capital false, that sort of stuff. So these allow us to have a yes or no answer inside of Python, true or false. Whenever we get to conditions like this line eight here, if name equals main, you'll see that we can actually store that result. So that equal equal sign will give us a bool back. So whenever we look at if statements and loops and that sort of stuff, we're going to use Boolean variables to actually identify, do we execute the if statement or do we execute the loop, that sort of stuff. The next thing we're going to talk about is a little bit harder, and we're I'm going to do a, a full video on strings because they're very powerful and there's a lot to them. However, all we need to know about a string right here is a string is in double or single quotes. I use double quotes for strings because in most programming languages, we use double quotes for strings. Okay, and a string is just sequences of characters. Now, the reason I put 0, 1, 2 there is because I want you to see that 0, 1, 2 is character zero, character one, character two. And the reason I say that is because it's not integer zero, one, two. So that's not a zero as we would think of it as a zero, one, two. Now there's a way to convert it, but in this case, we're looking at zero, one, two as just character zero, one, two. Now a string is just a sequence of characters, okay? So if I print this out, we have uh, the class is str. Now, the reason this is important is whenever we do input, that's how we get data from the user, or anytime we do print, has to convert the entire thing into a string. So if I say, give me a random number, and I do input, that's going to come back to me as a string. So we have to know how to do what's called typecasting, change it from one type into another. So in this case, we can see that type eight is indeed a string. That's exactly what we expect it to be because it's either in double quotes or single quotes. The single quotes are just apostrophes. Uh, a lot of times you'll see one or the other, but it doesn't really matter. Python treats them equally. So as you can see here, it's still a class of string. So then the thing about a string is, once again, I'll do another video on this, but the thing about a string is we can do what's called con concatenation. We do A plus, Let's do hello worlds for something like that. This is a string 0, 1, 2, hello world. So the plus operator is what's known as overloaded. If we have integers, it does arithmetic addition. If we have floating point, it does real number addition, decimal addition, that sort of stuff. If it's a string, it performs what is known as concatenation. Just basically appends it to the end of the string. Now we can also do it the other way around. We can do hello world plus A. And notice it goes, hello world, this is a string. Now, why is hello world and this smashed together? Well, the reason is I don't have a space here. You essentially have to make Python do what you want it to do. So if I want a space there, I put a space there. We execute it, hello world, this is a string 0, 1, 2. Now let's take a look at what happens. Let's say 13, we'll say B is equal to 10. Okay, and then we'll say C is equal to A plus B. Now, some people, unless you follow along with video, would think, hey, that should be the value 23. But it's not, because remember, these are strings. It gives us 13, 10, because it gives us string, string 13, which is an A, and appends it, remember that's your concatenation, with the value 10. And so that gives us 13, 10. So the important thing to do here is we, if we want to actually add these as integers, we have to cast them. And the way we cast them is we wrap it with the data type we want to cast it into. So we can put into here, we can put float here, that sort of stuff. Now, whenever we do this, we get 23 as an integer because Python will actually take that string and try to convert it. Now, one thing that's important is if there are characters in there that Python cannot convert, let's do 13a, notice it gives you a value error. This is what's known as a runtime error because we didn't know it, it was able to compile that sort of stuff or it's able to interpret it, 
But as soon as it tried to convert that into an integer, how would you convert 13a into an integer? Python doesn't know how, so it gives us a value error and it's like, hey, I don't know how to do this. Why? Because there's digits that aren't just 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way through 9. So hopefully that makes sense on what a string is. Once again, I will do another video on all the powerful things we could do with strings by joining them, splitting them, appending them, that sort of stuff. So we'll take a look at that a little bit later. But just in this video, I want to introduce variables and types. So we looked at the integer variables. Uh, we looked at how to actually make a variable. We just take a name and we assign it equal to something. And that actually makes the variable, it creates the variable inside of Python. So one of the things that we want to look at are what are known as containers. So the three containers that I'm going to teach you about in this class. The first one is called a list. The second one's called a dictionary. And the third one is called a set. And they all have unique properties to them and why you would choose one over the other. So list is created by assigning it into square brackets. Now, in this case, this is an empty list because I didn't put anything in there. But I'm free to put something like this inside of a list. Now, the list, unlike arrays in like C or C++, if you've ever looked at those, in C and C++, it has to be the same data type. However, in Python, you can see I'm combining integers and strings. We can put other lists inside of there. We can put other floats or whatever we want. So it can be a heterogeneous, different, different types of data types, that sort of stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to print the type of A, and notice it gives us a list. So remember, square brackets will create the list for you. Now, once again, I could put stuff inside the list whenever we define it, or I can wait later and we can tack things onto it later. So in this case, we have an empty list, but it still is a list as you can see here. So are there are different ways we can actually insert stuff into a list. There's what's called insert in which we have to provide an index where we want to put something, or we can do what's called append. We can actually put it at the back of the list. So if I do a.append15, and let's just print a, you can see that it put 15 there. Now, if I do append again, notice it puts it at the back of the list, the bottom of the list. That's why it's called append. Now, insert, as you can see, this little help comes up. The first thing is, is the index that we want to put it in. The important thing is to note that the index starts with zero. So if you look at this list down here, 15 is at index zero, 10 is at index one. So if I want this next number, let's just say we, the number that we want is 30 or something like that, okay? If we want 30 to be before 15, we would insert it at zero, okay? So what's going to happen is Python will move the 15 and 10 down to one and two, indices one and two respectively, and then put 30 at index zero. So notice 30 goes there. So whatever index I put there, that's where the new value is gonna go. Everything else will be shifted down. If I want it to be 15, 30, 10, I would insert this at index one. And notice we get 15, 30, 10. Now look what happens whenever I say insert at index two. We say index two, which is the doesn't really exist in this list because we only have two items, zero and one. However, because insert is adding an element, we're saying, okay, add it into index two, which is a newly created index for this list. So lists are very powerful in that we can grow them, we can shrink them. So there's a couple of ways we can actually shrink them. We can shrink them by using DEL, short for delete. And if we know the index, if we want to remove something by index, we would say D-E-L-A, and this is called the subscript property. So you might hear me say sub, so like A sub three or something like that. So let's say we want to remove the 10. We can see 10 is right here, and that's index one. So I'm going to put index one in there and see what gets printed. So notice we had 15, 10, and 30. I deleted the 10 by using D-E-L, and now we have 15 and 30. Now 30 moved up an index. So it was in index two, but now it's in index one. And we can verify that because notice on line nine, I'm printing the entire list. However, if I want to print one element in the list, we will use the subscript operator like I did on line seven. So let's say we want to print 30. So I put one inside there based on the index and it will give me integer 30. So let's do this real quick and see, I want to add the 15 and the 30 together. So hopefully you can follow along and say, well, I need to get the value at index zero, which is in this case, 15. And we're going to add the index uh, the value at index one, which in this case is 30. 
We take a look at that and we get the value 45. So if we want to get one item inside the list, we use the square brackets known as the subscript operator. If we wanna delete something from a list, we use DEL. If we wanna add something to the list, we have a choice. We can use a pen, which will always put it at the bottom of the list, or we can use insert, in which we have to specify an index where that new item is gonna go. So you can see, I wanted to grab one value. So if we use the list, if I print A, it's gonna print out list, the data type list. So A is of data type list. However, whenever we use the subscript operator, the square brackets on line nine, A sub zero will give me index zero, which is the first element inside the list. And because that first element inside the list is 15, it will give it to me as an integer. If I gave it to 15.0, it would give it to me as a float. So let's look at the other method on how we can remove something from a list. We can use a.remove, okay? And in this case, we can remove by value. So the DEL removed by its position, its index inside of the list. Remove will remove it by value. Remember, we wanted to remove the 10, okay? So in this case, now I'm gonna print the entire list and the value of a sub zero, a sub four. Okay, so notice that we removed 10 on line seven, 10 is now gone and we're still left with 45. So we accomplished the same thing. The first method was, here's how we removed by index. This method is, here's how we remove by value. So that's how lists are. And they're very powerful in this case so that we can keep inserting things, we can remove them and we can even change a value. Let's say instead of removing 10, we wanna change 10 into a different value. So A sub one is where 10 is located now. Remember we appended 15, so that went to index zero. We appended 10, that's now in index one, and we inserted 30 at index two. So zero is 15, one is 10, and two is 30 in this example. But we can also put this on the left-hand side of an equal sign to change the value inside of a list. So in this case, we'll say 11. Oops, B is not defined. Let's get rid of that. There we go. Okay, so notice that the 10 went from 10 and is now equal to 11. We can also do something like A sub zero plus A sub two. Oops. There we go. And now it's going to be the value 45, which is 15 plus 30. So there's many different ways we can actually do this. And Python is smart enough to know what essentially you want to do here. So one of the things you saw here is name B is not defined. Now, this wasn't something I was going to bring up, but as you can see, if we try to use a variable that does not exist, we're going to get what's called a name error. This is a runtime error, and it just says, hey, you tried to use B, but in nowhere in your program is a variable named B. So it's going to spit it out and say, hey, look, that didn't work. All right. So there are more involved things that you can look at the lecture notes and see what you can do with list. But I'm going to move on and use what's called a tuple. Now, tuples are essentially a list, except they're read only. So whenever I create a tuple, we use parentheses. So remember on a list, we use square brackets, the subscript operator. Now we have a tuple. Let's print the type. And notice we have a class of a tuple. Now a tuple is just like a list, except we can't grow it, we can't shrink it, and we can't change any of the values. So notice that a.append does not exist. And we're gonna get an attribute error that says, hey, there is no way to append into a tuple. So essentially it has to be defined whenever we create it. So one, two, and three. Now, whenever we print this, we can see that it has one, two, and three. And we can actually look at it normally using a sub zero, a sub one, a sub two. So just like a list, now it prints out one, two, and three. However, unlike a list, Let's say a sub one equals a sub zero plus a sub two. Okay, so now what I'm trying to do is on the right hand side of the equal sign, I'm getting the value one and three, I'm adding them together, which is four, which is fine. But what is not fine is I'm trying to assign that into wherever two is located now. I'm gonna get a type error and it says tuple does not support item assignment. What that means to you is, hey, a tuple cannot assign a value after it's been created. So on line two, a equals uh, parentheses one, two, and three, it's set in stone from that, that time forward. Now I can, read, I can change A, but the old one, two, and three is now gone. Now it's four, five, and six. So in Python, we can reassign a variable. The old value goes away. It's completely gone. There's no way to get it back. And it gets the new value inside there. 
So that's a tuple. Now tuples are mainly used to, to pass large amounts of data into what are known as functions. You'll see those a little bit later in this class, but just know that there is a tuple and all it is is a read only list. So let's take a look at what is known as a dictionary. So a dictionary is much like a list except, or a tuple, but we're going to use curly braces. So a dictionary, which is this class right here, supports assignment, supports removing, that sort of stuff. Now remember in a dictionary, we have what are known as keys and values. A key is how are we going to find this object within the dictionary? So remember in a list, we use the index to find it, but in a dictionary, we get to define what that index is. It could be a name, it could be an index, it could be a list, it could be any data type that we want. Now notice I created an empty dictionary by doing this. I can assign values by using this key value. And let's just say A, so that's the key. We separate the key and the value with a, a, a colon. And then we can say 12, we'll say B is 13, we'll say C is 15, okay? So now in this case, we have three keys and three values. So A refers to the value 12, B refers to the value 13, C refers to the value 15. Now notice I put them into quotes. That means string A, string B, string C, okay? So you can see it's a dictionary, A is referring to 12. Now, how do we refer to this value? If I want to recall the value 12, I would do the subscript operator, just like what we did, okay? A with a subscript of A. So now we put the key inside of the square brackets. So now we're looking at the item 12. So let's see what happens when we print this out. It gives me the value 12. Now, unlike a tuple, dictionaries are not read only. Okay, so what line five is going to do is it's going to assign A, which is currently value 12, but that's gonna be deleted. It's gonna go away. And we're going to assign it the value of A sub B, which is 13 and A sub C, which is 15. So let's print that out when we're done. Okay, notice originally on line four, it's the value 12 because that's the value we gave it. However, on line five, we reassign it the value 28, which is the value 13 plus 15. So you can see we can do that sort of stuff inside of it. Now, like a list, we can delete elements inside of here. So remember on a list, we give it the index, but in a, a dictionary, we can remove it by its key. Okay, so notice it prints out 12, that's A sub A. However, A sub A goes away on line six. And then whenever we print out the dictionary, it's completely gone. So whenever I print out A here, it only prints out B and C because those are the only keys available. Now, if I want to add keys, there is no append or something like that. I can just assign a new key, a new value. Now these values can be any data type, it can be a list, it could be a tuple, it could be a float, it could be an integer, it could be a string. So notice now what I've done is just by doing line six, assigning a new key of value, it will take that key and assign it a value. In this case, it's a list. So one of the weird things is, is I can do a hello. That will give me the entire list. But let's say I just want four. So zero is at, uh, one is at index zero, two is at index one, three is at index two, and four is at index three. Okay, so let's print out a hello and it prints out the entire list. So I do another square brackets on three and it will give me four directly. So don't be nervous if you see more than one square brackets because you need the square brackets to look in the dictionary and give you one value. And if that value is another container like another dictionary or list, then we need another subscript operator to get the value inside of that list or whatever it happens to be. So as you can see, we can add things to a dictionary. We can remove them using DEL. There's a whole bunch of other things that we can do. We can look at the keys inside of a dictionary by doing a.keys, okay? Now notice there's an open parentheses and closed parentheses. When we get into classes, you'll see this is what's known as a method. We're saying, given this dictionary, give me the keys. Whenever I run it, it gives me the dictionary keys A, B, and C, okay? We can go the other way and say, give me the values. Okay, and the dictionary values are 12, 13, and 15. So notice it's kind of like a list and that that's what's going to give us. So dictionaries are powerful. They're much like lists, except we get to decide how we're going to establish a key. So in a list, the key is its index. 
In a dictionary, we get to decide what the key is going to be. It could be a string. So I don't have to use strings. I could use a float. So like 1.0 is 12, 1.2 is 13, 1.4 is 15. Oops, got the parts. There we go. So notice now the key is a float. So if I want to refer to the 13, I would do 1.2 and it would give me the value 13. Now, I don't know why you'd want to do that, but hey, there you go. You have the opportunity with a dictionary to choose how, what type of key you want. And it doesn't have to be heterogeneous. I can do, I'm sorry, homogeneous. It could be heterogeneous. In this case, notice we have two floats and a string that sort of looks like a float. So if I wanted to refer to 15, notice if I do 1.4, it's not going to be able to find it. Why? Because that's floating point 1.4. But we're referring to it on line two as a string. And it gives us the value 15. So that's a dictionary. Now, the last one we're going to talk about is what's known as a set. So a set is unordered and it can only have unique values. So a set is created by using set open parentheses, close parentheses. So I'm going to print the type of A here and notice that it gives us a set. So in this case, we can add elements into a set by using add, A to add. Now let's add 10, A to add 12. A dot add 15. Okay, so now whenever we try to print A, we're going to get a set with 12, uh, 10, 12, and 15. Now, don't be concerned that it has curly braces. There's only so many we can use. It's not a dictionary, it's a set. Now, one of the things about a set is we can't index into it because it's unordered. So if I do A sub zero, notice it tells you, hey, you can't get into it. Why? Because the order that you think it's in is not in this order. So what you can do instead is a in this case which is a set it let's say we try to add 10 a dot add 10 a dot add 10 okay so let's print a in this case and see what happens we have 10 12 and 15 however shouldn't we have four tens now remember what i said it's unordered and you can only have unique values inside there so because 10 is already in there, it, on line 8, 9, and 10, it's like, hey, 10 is already in here. You can't add it again. You'll see on your first lab, your first algorithm lab, that this is going to be very important. Why? Because if we need a unique thing inside there, we can use a set to do it. So essentially, a set is like a list, except the list is indexable. We can actually look inside the list. But we can actually sort of uh, fudge the way a set, uh, set works using a list by first checking to see if something in the list before we actually look at it. So let's take a look at how we can actually look at something inside of a list. So once again, a set just looks like this. We create it using set. It's unordered and we have unique values inside of it. So let's go back to a list real quick. And let's do one, two, and three. Now remember that Boolean data type I told you about the true or false, the yes or no? So a lot of times we wanna see if a value is inside of a list instead, of going through each element and seeing if that element is equal to what we're looking for, let's say our key is the value five, okay? So let's print key in A, okay? So in, notice it turns purple, is a special keyword. So what this is gonna do in Python is to see if the key, which in this case is the value five, is in A, the list A. And notice it gives me the value false. Remember false is that Boolean value. So let's set the key equal to two, and it gives me the value true. Now, notice it doesn't tell me where it's located. It only tells me that it is in there. If we want to do where it is located, we can say um, key equals three. We'll say lock for location equals a dot find key. Okay. Now, whenever we run this, it doesn't have a find. Okay. So a lot of students think that, hey, a list has a thing called find. Unfortunately, they named it index, okay? So a lot of students think, hey, if I wanna find something inside of the list, it's called find. But as you can see right here, it's not called find. Instead, it's called index. So if I do a dot index, I'm asking Python, hey, give me the index where this key is located. The key in this case is three. As we can see, one is in the index zero, two is in the index one, three is in the index two. That's why we get the value two. So hopefully, as you can see here, we get an attribute error key. Uh, I'm sorry, find does not exist in this case. It is the value index, okay? That's how we can find something by and get its index. 
So remember, in, I-N, that just tells me whether this value is inside the list. That's a true or false. However, if we want to find out where it's located, we have to use index. Now, look what happens whenever I say five. Okay? Notice that index, because five can't be found, will give me an error called the value error, where it says five is not in the list. So a lot of times we'll have to use a conditional, which you'll learn a little bit later, and say, okay, is this in the list? If it is in the list, give me the index of that so we can look at it inside the list. So there you have it. So let's go back to the lecture notes. So we looked at integers, we looked at floats, we looked at strings, we looked at bool. Those are your primitive data types. And then whenever we look down here, we looked at the lists. We saw that we can put heterogeneous data types in there. In this case, this has an integer, an integer, a float, a string, and a bool. Lists are created using the square brackets. We use zero-based index. We looked what happened when we had list indices out of range. We looked at how to append and add to a list or insert into a list. We looked at how to remove by value and by index. Uh, I did not cover sorting, but there is a built-in sort method. So in this case, let's do three, seven, and five. Okay, now this is done in place. So it changes the value of A. So if I do A.sort, A, which is what contains the list, will now be sorted. Now it's three, five, and seven. So I did three, seven, and five, which is out of order. We do A.sort, it automatically sorts it. Python gets to decide how it's going to sort it. So it may or may not be the most efficient way to sort. Okay, then we talked about sets. Sets are unordered and they store unique values. And Maybe those properties help you with the algorithm that you're trying to develop. Dictionaries, we saw that the dictionaries use the curly braces or curly brackets, however you want to call it. And in that case, we can create a new value by using a new unique key. We can change it by using the key. We can see what types of keys there are or values there are inside of there. And we looked at deleting keys. We can use DEL and give it the key. Okay. Now, the last thing, well, we already covered the floating point as well. We covered integer division as well as floor division and saw how those work. So what's important about this is to know whenever you're confused and something is not going right, always take a look at the data type to see if it's the data type you expect it to be. And we can do that by using TYPE type. And Python will give me the type of the data. In this case, it's called a list. So if you ever wanna know, okay, I, I think this is a float, challenge yourself. Make something up and see if you can determine what the type is. Make, make, see if you can predict what Python is going to call that. So you've been watching variables and types in Python. I think we're done. Let's see. Did we understand the basic data types such as an in, float, and string? Hopefully. String, remember, I'm going to do a, another video on how we actually look at the string, how we can peel apart a string, add things to a string, and that sort of stuff. Check the type of variable. We just covered that. That's TYPE. Be able to create a list, insert elements, and remove elements elements into a list. We've done that. To create a dictionary, insert elements, and remove elements in a dictionary. We've done that. And distinguish between an integer and a floating point, which is known as a real number. We've done that. So there you have it. That is variables and types. Thanks for watching.